Hi, welcome and uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, this is the NCH Audio Essentials. Uh, this is the Mixpad uh, Audio Mixer. Um, I'm just going to get a level here. and uh, Hit the record button and uh, I'm just doing live recording here. I have to set the metronome on so we know all the um, tempo. Timing is slightly out here because I'm not using the ASIO, uh, really, for your SAM card you need to use ASIO, so it's, it's real time. Okay, that should be plenty. So we've got our waveform up here. I'll just turn it off record. And go back to the beginning. Just make sure that was okay then. So you can uh, you choose your waveform, you click on it, and then you can um, just from the top you've got compressor and um, change the volume. This is quite handy. Rename the clip because uh, you might have several clips on the same line. So you can uh, you can give it a new name, and there it is. Um, so yeah, a amplify, compressor, chorus, flanger, distortion, echo, reverb, you can add those all to it. Um, you've also got uh, these handles. See the red line here? So this is a volume handle. just have to push these little blocks up to change the overall volume or you can double click somewhere in the line and it produces a new node I'm going to change the name so you can do all sorts of fade in fade outs you can get uh, quite flash with your, your volume controls just keep clicking to add different nodes Right, so just double click on this and uh, you can give the track a new name. As I say, I'm just, uh, I'm just making this up as I go along just to show you uh, how it sounds. Yeah, let's get the volume here. That's fine. So here it is with my uh, with my finished lead inserted. Now, as you can see from the waveform, it's quite low, so I'm just going to bump this up in volume a bit, see if I can balance it out. Might be a bit loud, but we'll give that a go. I should point out this is uh, VST um, compatible, so you can have your um, these don't have to be um, recordings uh, on each track. They can you can have VSTs and use it as a MIDI recorder as well. It's got a bit of everything on here. Um, you know, split points. You can you can split one um, one take into several, or or you can join several of them together. Just all from the top here. It's, it's quite easy to uh, to do. So here we go, if we uh, export the project, you can export it into, well, so many different types of file types, it just isn't funny. Um, WAV would be the most common one, probably, if you were going to burn it. But as you can see, there are many different, everything you can think of, you can uh, you can export it to. And for each one you choose, you hit on that, and then there's, there's different variations on that as well.
So here we go, uh, this is the uh, finished export. Sound quality is exactly the same as the uh, original recording, and it's very easy to use. Um, this is the sound file converter that is included in the package. It's called Switch, and this will convert virtually any sound format you can think of into virtually any other sound format you can imagine. So uh, here I've just got some uh, some MP3s. Down the bottom here, you choose what you want it to turn into. It can be um, AIFF, AIF, AAC, um, WAV, uh, MP4, um, FLAC, which is extremely good. Um, I'm going to try Windows Media once again. Choose on choose what you want it to do, and uh, lots of different variations of different qualities. So with these ones, I just drag and drop them. I just uh, had a window open, just drop them into the uh, into the center of the program. Hit OK, and then there we go, convert. Uh, these three, I'm going to shorten it for the for this, but the, these three just took a, took a few seconds, really. There we go. Now, if I open that, and you can see, uh, there are the uh, the three files that I I did, literally in just a few seconds. And if we have a look at the properties, they are now Windows Media Audio, just like that, incredibly fast. Uh, you don't have to use the drag and drop method. If you want to, you can add a whole folder in, in one go. Um, so if you're doing a whole album, this is probably the way to go. So just hit add folder, browse to where you want to go to. Let's just choose something here. Maybe not disco hits. So choose the one you want, press OK, and there they all are. So with like three clicks, you can convert any format into any other format. So here we go. This is the WavePad Sound Editor. This is where you can uh, you can edit WAVs that you've already got. Well, it doesn't have to be WAVs, but the samples or, or tracks that you've got. Um, load them up into this and it's a very very fast way of adding effects or adjusting the volume here's a waveform that I've just pulled in from a from a CD just took a few seconds to load it in. Yeah, a bit of Jean-Michel uh, down the left hand side there's all the the most common things you might want to do you can mix it with another file, amplify, normalize. Normalize means to take it to 0 dB. Um, it's also got uh, removal of noise and hiss and that sort of thing with one button. So here we're going to normalize. Uh, I don't normally do 100. But you can see instantly from the waveform that it's already much, much louder. Uh, equalizer. Incredible equalizer. Um, just like this one where you can put your own nodes in and, and change it as much as you want to or you've got um, graphic equalizer or oh, all your presets down the bottom here you can do your own your graphic it splits it up into to useful um, frequencies down the bottom generating a preview here down the bottom and you can say how many bands you want it's really very powerful uh, you can really muck about with the audio and change it I must point out these are not real time. You adjust the equalizer and then hit apply. Uh, VST plugins, it's completely VST2 uh, compatible. Um, just uh, choose where they are and, um, and we'll plug one in. So I've used a, a reverb plugin here. It's a free reverb plugin called Epic Verb. Rather a massive sound. 
So just click on apply effect. So see it's pretty quick to do it. There it is washed in reverb. Just click up there, you can do it. it. Sounds much more dry. Plenty of special effects, phasers, echoes, they're all built in. You don't need a VST at all. So if you don't have any, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's got loads of them with um, loads of them built in with different presets. A gentle phase here. So there you go, envelopes, you can choose your fade in, fade out points uh, just by clicking on the line and dragging it. It's that simple. Quite powerful, very easy to use, very immediate to use. There we go, that's the WavePad Sound Editor. Okay, this is the uh, Zulu DJ software package that uh, is included. Quite simply, Drag and drop your your tracks can be uh, any f any music format you like into the uh, into the slots deck A deck B. You've got separate headphone uh, volume and uh, main volume. Now, if you've got two sound cards, you can you can um, you can check uh, say deck B without it coming through the main speakers. With this one, you can record your mixes too. You can uh, you can choose. Um, different cue marks, so it will always start from your cue mark. You'd obviously want that to be on the downbeat. As you can hear, just click on the cue and that will jump to that spot. Um, you've got various effects you can use. So this is the, this is the beat on deck A, it's blue, and then uh, B, you see that the B is bright yellow, and that's the yellow one. So Play. This is the speed slider, just change the speed slider uh, until the yellow and the blue are together, in which case it will turn green, and that means they're synced up. Okay, so now they're together and the hit sync. Yep. Together. That's just cross fade between deck A and deck B. Here you've got different effect slots. Uh, pretty editable. And here you've got not only bass and treble and mid, but if you click the button, it's a kill switch, so you can, you can kill the mid, the bass, and so it's quite Mess around with your own mixes and get something pretty decent out of it with a bit of practice. I should put that I'm no DJ, I'm a keyboard player and a guitar player, but I'm no DJ. It also has the ability to use any MIDI controller as a controller for the software automatically maps it out for most of the uh, currently available brands. Three different effects you can do with the, with the pull down, but most of them um, have got buttons for it anyway. So here we go, MIDI controller. I use an Axum USB 25, it's already automatically found that and then you can choose any of the buttons to do any of the things on the top.